This is a good bill, and everyone should vote yes for this. But I'm just going to kind of expand here. You know, it seems like the division is great in this room. Uh, One side of the aisle versus the other is so obvious. Um, You know, at what point are people going to be self-responsible? Some people seem to think the government is the answer for everything. You know, free food, free health care, free this, free that, free, free, free. But it's not free. These young kids need to be taught self-responsibility. And I can tell you my personal story. I started working at age nine. And I continued to work throughout high school when I was 14, 15. And my parents, I wanted to get a driver's license. And they're like, sorry, Cherie, we can't afford to add you to our car insurance, much less a car. And uh, I went to work in Columbia at 15. It is good for these kids. And you know what these kids of today are? Majority of them are lazy. They don't know what work ethic is, but they know how to play video games all night. They know how to join gangs. They know how to get into trouble. Get a, get a job and be responsible. Vote yes. Missouri State Rep Sherry Tolson Reich really wants her constituents to know that she thinks all their kids are lazy, good for nothing gang members as if she peeks her face into their homes every night. Republicans keep showing us how much they really don't like Americans, especially our kids. Maybe it's because of my background of growing up in a rural area, growing up working on farms, being in a tobacco patch, a hayfield, working when it's 100 degrees outside, being in a hay barn, being in a tobacco barn. These I did from the age 9, 10 years old. To know that my parents instilled that in me to pass on to the little one that's at my house who, at 11 years old, works during the summer. After it took Kentucky State Representative Myron Dossett about 45 minutes to get about five sentences out, it's clear that their regressive party has shifted into high gear to turn back the clock on child labor laws. And they somehow think that bragging about their experiences working on farms or taking jobs in the middle of their fourth grade school year is convincing. But for the people that aren't ready to send little Timmy to the meatpacking plant after school, their talking points are consistently negative. We might have a child that has no job, no dependents, but sitting on a couch. We're going to encourage that person to get a job and have to go to work, which gives them worth and value. We're going to look at other things, too, to make the economy stronger. It is insulting. Even before Kevin McCarthy was run out of what turned out to be his own part-time temporary summer position as Speaker of the House, He was pushing the Republican narrative that your kids are worthless unless they're out making more money for the employers that paid Republican politicians to find a new way to exploit labor. And somehow the answer was to call everyone's kids stupid, unmotivated and inadequate to cover for their fealty. Why are lawmakers actually doing this? The bill was uh, really spearheaded by the Restaurant Association. Um, We sort of came along. We were asked to be uh, we were invited to come along. That's Brad Epperly, a lobbyist who works for big corporate clients like the Iowa Grocery Industry Association. He's outright admitting to us that the Iowa Restaurant Association was the driving force behind this bill. This child labor law rollback originated at a meeting of the Iowa Workforce Development Board, which is overseen by Governor Kim Reynolds. Most of its members are corporate CEOs and lobbyists, and they meet up several times a year to come up with new policies. This bill was a product of a meeting in November. The WDB is chaired by Jay Iverson, executive officer of the Association of Iowa Builders, hence the emphasis on kids using bandsaws on work sites. The next part of the bill was clearly written for the Iowa Restaurant Association, Hotel and Lodging Association, and National Bureau of Independent Businesses, the state leaders in low-wage jobs. It would allow 14-year-olds to work in giant freezing meat lockers and raise their mandatory clock out time from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m and then 11 p.m. in the summer. And like anything else that wealthy elite Republicans determine is good for everyone else's kids to do, I get the feeling that their kids aren't risking life and limb to prove that they're not worthless. 
it's always the working class whose kids are expendable enough to fill the quotas that these legislators' bosses in dangerous industries have demanded. They don't even care that their scheme has been exposed for years. The number of children and youth found employed in violation of federal law has risen 88% since 2019. In my home state of Washington, a record number of businesses have been fined for violating child labor laws in recent years. It's pretty clear that the lobbyist approved cycle of keeping workers' wages low with an unlivable minimum wage that never moves anywhere near the cost of living, along with constant price gouging in every aspect of our consumer lives is unsustainable. They regularly exploit migrant labor to keep as much money in their pockets as possible. But that pool might be drying up with the political demonization of the very people that they take advantage of. So we're running out of people to continue to feed our capitalistic industries that have no limit to their greed. So naturally, your kids are their current targets. Now, what we have here is that there are even some lawmakers in states like Wisconsin, Ohio, and Iowa that are proposing the loosening of child labor laws in their state because they have so many jobs that are left unfulfilled. We have seen teenagers dying in states like Wisconsin, Missouri, and Michigan because so many jobs are going unfilled and many of these Republican legislatures would rather roll back child labor laws and put 11 and 13 year olds back in the workplace that allow immigrants into their community and do what they've always done.